Hello and welcome to Quarterlight, your car brochure channel. Today we're going to be looking at the 1976 Plymouth Fury. Welcome back and if you are into car brochures please do subscribe I'm sure you'll find something of interest here. So today's episode the Plymouth Fury. I'm sometimes accused of not liking American cars but that's really not the case. I was brought up in England there was no American cars so I never got an interest or a knowledge of them and certainly when I think back to my childhood American car never comes to mind. But nevertheless I do still like them, I just don't have that huge amount of knowledge, so, you know, certainly help me in the comments after the video if you wish. Anyway, when I think about the Plymouth Fury, I'm instantly thought of the 1958 Stephen King classic, Christine. Incidentally, when he was picking a car to choose for that, to that, for that book, and indeed movie, um, he didn't know which car to pick, but he wanted to pick a more obscure uh, vehicle instead of picking something obvious for example like a I don't know a Mustang or a Camaro or, or something different so when you're thinking about a Plymouth Fury Stephen King thought it a little bit obscure and certainly today's car is certainly a little bit obscure for me it's a 1976 version so it's not even that classic 58 this Plymouth Fury is a 1976 model which by my reckonings would make that a seventh generation there is something quite unusual about this today's brochure as well um, which we'll have a look at now so let's get on with it and have a look at the brochure itself so here it is the 1976 Plymouth Fury and there's various models within this brochure the Fury Sports the Fury Saloon the Fury and the Fury Wagon um, I do believe this uh, one on the front uh, this coupe two-door version um, is the Fury Sport, which was the higher spec model, which would include this sort of pinstriping, these sort of uh, bucket type seats, and all the luxuries of shag pile carpeting, typical 70s luxuries on American car. And you can also see this little uh, emblem on the front, which would have been sort of like spring loaded. Anyway, I did promise you there was something a little bit weird about this brochure and I'm going to show you straight away. I won't even make you wait. We'll zoom in straight away on that dealer stamp. And here it is, a dealer stamp for ACC or the American Car Centre, which was at 144 London Road, Kingston upon Thames, Surrey. So this American brochure of an American car uh, somehow the brochure found its way to the American Car Centre. I'm not sure what the American Car Centre was in Surrey in the 70s. If you know, please do let me know what was the, the story there. I don't know if they sold uh, brand new grey imported American cars or it was just like a second hand imported cars and they just happened to get these brochures I really don't know but that's something a little bit unusual because it wouldn't have been sold in the UK normally anyway back to the brochure let's flip that back over and see what's inside okay so let's open the brochure and see what we've got first we go we've got this lovely sort of cherry red um, uh, coupe um, this is referring to it as the uh, Fury Sport which I do believe would have been the top of the range model again with this sort of pinstripe treatment on it and then on the inside these extremely lovely seats and I'm sure there were extremely comfortable seats for going down your American highway um, not really suitable for the UK roads in the 70s which again is strange that we've got that dealer stamp on and I also think with these large engines the 70s fuel crisis who bought one of these in the UK in the in the 70s it's very strange I don't understand that but like I say if you can help me out by understanding why it's got that UK dealer stamp on them please do so anyway we'll have a brief look at some of this text and see what's going on here 
So the Fury Sport, comfort and luxury from the word go. There's a new motoring view for that point that's looking towards a smaller than full size car. The Fury had a strange development through its generations. At some point it was seen to be like a full size car. Other generations it was kind of like a mid-sized car. It was a bit of a strange one. Of course we're not we're talking in American terms. In UK terms, this was a huge car, however you looked at it. Uh, but purely from an American terms, it was a strange sort of car that can flip in from one to the other. Sleek and tastefully styled with spirited trim accents that give it a go-ahead look. That's the 1976 Plymouth Fury. Spacious, handsomely appointed and large enough that you won't feel limited. We've added optional louvered windows, shown on left, with a canopy vinyl roof to the sleek sport, the Fury Sport, sorry, the Fury Sport's sleek sloping body lines. Standard tape stripes and styled roll wheels are Fury features you wouldn't overlook and wouldn't want to. And it goes on to say the Fury Sport standard 318 engine is paired with an electronic condition for sure starts in any weather. And we get this lovely picture of these white seats. Can't say I'm a huge fan of these white seats. I don't, I don't know who uses a car with white seats. How do you ever keep that clean? And I think it looks a bit meh. Uh, but as it says here, the no charge optional all vinyl bucket seats with folding center armrest. And on this side, it's showing the optional 60 40 Baccaraton split bench seats in rich woven cloth and grained vinyl with center armrest and dual reclining seat backs. And at the bottom it's just showing that, referring to that being the Fury Sport two-door hardtop. And as we zoom out, we can certainly see, I, like I say, I think they look extremely nice seats to sit in for sure. Very comfortable. Um, not so much support. I won't say they're particularly very supporting seat, but they do certainly look very comfortable. And if you, you, you look at this very unusual um, layout for the seat belt on there as well. Although... I'm not sure Americans were hugely keen on wearing seat belts anyway. Anyway, let's turn the page. And we get our first glimpse of the four door saloon um, with a big Plymouth badging on the back there. This is what they refer to as the Fury Saloon, commonly enough. Not very imaginative title there, but there we go, the Fury Saloon. So let's have a quick look at this. Fury Saloon luxury styling that's outstanding at the price. Fury Saloon is designed for people who prefer a smaller car, but don't want to go without the comfort and luxury you usually find in a larger, more expensive class. You can see that the Fury Saloon is elegant in abundance. Saloon, saloon's contemporary front treatment blends single headlamps and parking lamps. Bright metal trim defines the wheel openings, white glass areas and headlight housings. Saloon's carpeting is thick colour keyed shag. The optional spur tyre and trunk cover of loop pile weave carpet helps protect baggage and other uh, scratchable surfaces and it says on the road you've got two standard power choices the so-called economical 225 six cylinder and the 318 v8 uh, and it also says an optional 360 and 400 v8 uh, but we'll have a look at them in the specifications later and if you don't know we'll we'll sort of go through what that refers to in actual cc's and then if we go down we do get another glimpse of the interior, the velour and vinyl center armrest seat, standard on saloon, sedan and Fury Sport two-door hardtop. And also this, this unusual seat as well in red, the uh, heightened by rich velour 60-40 split bench seats. Uh, very nice, almost like a, a 70s couch. And this young lady who's I don't know if she's particularly small, but she certainly looks small in that particular car. If we look at the dash, typical 70s, sort of like this 
coloured dashboard. I'm not a huge fan of these coloured dashboards with the fake wood in there, but um, I'm sure many of you are. That's just my personal opinion. It says modular instrument panel with easy to read, easy to reach controls. And then if we again, we'll zoom out and we'll have a look on the next page. A couple of nice images of that uh, saloon. And this particular one is just entitled Fury. Um, presumably a sort of lower spec, sort of like the basic uh, Fury model, I think. So in size and styling, it's the better part of value. Fury offers the economical minded car buyer two beautiful ways to go, with a two door hardtop model and the popular four door sedan. And in 76, Fury is providing once again that you can have economy and enjoy it too. This is a family sized car with long stylish lines and broad glass areas accented with bright metal trim. And it goes on to say some of the, the equipment on there. Um, you know, you've got disc brakes on the front. Um, what else? You've got a fuel pacer system. Not sure what that is. And an auto speed controller. Um, and the ratio is 2, 4, 5. Uh, so trying to make it a more economical model, I guess. Although, you know, I'm sure it was still a bit of a gas hog. And we look at this more simpler interior. Uh, the smartly tailored all vinyl split back bench seat with wide center armrest is a Fury option. I kind of like prefer the more plainer seats, I must admit. And you can have it in this sort of nice green color. I quite like that too. Uh, standard bench seat in its fashion detail with pattern cloth and vinyl covering. So a little bit of a nice sort of pattern on there as well I quite like that one and then once again if we pan out and then turn the page we get probably what is my favorite actually I know as sad as it, it seems I, out of all of them I think I would choose this one it's what they refer to as the Fury Sport Suburban so young, lively sized for today in two versions Fury and Fury Sport the Sport being the higher model an unusual title for this estate or station wagon. Young, lively sized. I'm not sure what they're getting at there. Are they trying to say it's a smaller car? Because it's absolutely as big as a whale. But never mind. This handsome fury wagon is everything its name implies. It has a sport look. I'm not sure what it means by a sport look. And says it's ready for anything you are. A fishing weekend or team outing and a suburban way of handling things from 10 flats of marigolds to sheet of 4x8 panelling with three way door gate closed. And in some ways this makes me feel a little bit sad in some ways um, that these big American uh, station wagons aren't around anymore. You know, in, in the US, kind of like they kind of like died out because everyone wanted these huge trucks but this seems a far better idea if you want to go to the uh, the diy store and get your four by eight paneling or indeed as it says here uh, 10 flats of marigolds interesting so it says here the fully sport suburban's interior is designed to handle people beautifully with full form seat backs, smart door trims and padded instruments. It goes on to say standard features are the 360 V8. Again, I'm sure it was a bit of a gas hog for sure. Particularly if you think about it, if it was sold in the UK at that UK dealership, which I'm sure none of them were. Uh, so it finally ends up with a strange line, the 1976 Fury Suburban and Sport Suburban. The, the look is young, lean, eager for an active life. Who on earth wrote this? I don't know, but they need firing immediately. Let's have a look at some of the pictures before I get too upset. So first picture is this sort of nice, nice seating. The lady apparently is supposed to be the wife, I guess, after she's had three plus kids. As this is the estate version, but 
kind of a little bit weird, isn't it? Um, so it's an optional all vinyl 60-40 split bench seat with reclining driver side and passenger side seats. At the back is that extremely handy and hugely versatile. Like I say, I think this is a better vehicle really than these huge trucks that everyone drives around with them now. Um, and to a certain extent, you know, your people carriers, your vans uh, took the place of these station wagons. Um, but in reality now it seems to be all that people want are these huge trucks. But like I say, I think this makes far more sense. Carpeted rear cargo deck with 86.8 .8 cubic feet of load space for 4x8 materials with the door gate closed. So very handy. And at the bottom here, we've got this sort of nice bench seat option. So a vinyl bench seat with centre armrests and foam seat backs. Standard in Fury Sports, optional in Fury Wagon. I like the... Uh, the bench seat. What a great idea. And then if we go to one side, it says an optional air deflector, helps clear rear window. Maybe a wiper would have helped there, but nevertheless, it's gone for an air deflector. And this lovely uh, optional adjust, uh, adjustable luggage rack. You certainly wanted a luggage rack on something like that, didn't you? And uh, finally, we'll turn the page once again. And it gives you some little little bits of details on here. Fury, Fury Engineering, it's worth a lot to you. Uh, some little standard specification, which we'll zoom in. Love this picture of this yellow uh, Fury wagon. Doesn't like look fancy. Towing this sort of like a little pop-up type trailer. Um, how very hub nut is that? I'm sure Hubnut would love something like that. Uh, we've also got optional sunroofs, um, and we've got these this sort of uh, electric rear window defroster as well. But let's zoom in at some of the standard specifications. Okay, so the standard specification, it's saying the engines are a 2256, a 318 V8, and a 360 V8. So a 225 would have been like a 3.69 litre uh, vehicle, sort of like a, a, a slant 6, I guess. Uh, a 318 would have been a 5.2 litre, uh, that would have been a V8. And the 360 would have been a huge 5.9 litre. So even the basic one, you know, the huge uh, engines. But of course, it is, even though it's showing a mid-range car, it's still a huge uh, vehicle. And it gives some little information on the front, um, um, showing manual and power disc, front brakes, etc., etc., and the dimensions. Of course, you can pause this video if you do particularly want to look at this in any detail. Um, and it also shows uh, the different transmissions uh, that you could have for each version. On the opposite side, there it's giving some information, so unibody construction, um, etc., etc. This tuned exhaust system. Uh, to reduce external noise and this seven dip and spray rust prevention and it's got a little bit of a note about economy engineering so it's an optional fuel pacer system that it's got and an option auto speed controller as well on the opposite page there is a few more little options so showing the air conditioning this am uh, fm stereo power seats for finger control, power door locks, auto speed control or cruise control and a carpeted trunk with a 19.4 cubic capacity that's a four door sedan and then we've got some of the Fury's optional equipment like air conditioning etc and you can see the different models that you could actually um, get those in always meaning optional S is standard NA not applicable I'm not going to go through all this um, but if you do want to pause the video anytime you certainly can do I hope it's clear enough for you to have a look
One thing I am going to mention though is the performance options. So we have got some larger engine options there as well. Um, so we've got this 360 as being that 5.9 litre. We've also got a 400 which is a huge 6.6 .6 litre engine as well. So that's a, a big, big engine there in the car. Um, crazy that isn't it I, in uk terms uh imagining having a, a 6.6 .6 liter v8 you can imagine how inefficient that would be in the uk but of course in the us it's a different market fuel was relatively cheap although 70s there were a bit of a fuel crisis there was also a 440 believe it or not a 440 is a 7.2 liter so a magnum v8 that was tended to be the uh, police uh, four-door sedan. And then if we go to the final back page, it is giving some of the standard features, which I'll zoom in, and some of these sort of dimensions that we always see on all these brochures. You can see some of the standard features on the Fury, the lower specs model. I'm not gonna go through it all, uh, but again, you can pause it and have a look at that if you need to. Uh, the Fury Sport, the higher spec model, such extras such as the deluxe wheel covers and that shag carpeting and that little spring mounted hood ornament. Um, we've got the Fury Saloon um, hood ornament, saloon nameplate and crest, deluxe wheel uh, covers. Um, and and also this Fury Sport Suburban, that huge big station wagon or, or a state car. And then finally, um, we look over to this side, the standard safety features. No airbags here, of course. And if we look right at the bottom here, um, it's giving us a little bit of a 12 month warranty information, but more interestingly at this side, it's showing the Fury exterior paint colours. So we could have things like silver cloud metallic, powder blue, Jamaican blue metallic, rally red, vintage red metallic, bittersweet metallic, jade metallic, uh, tropical green metallic, deep Sherwood metallic, caramel tan metallic, moon dust metallic, cinnamon metallic, yellow blaze, uh, golden fawn, Inca gold metallic, Spanish gold metallic, spinnaker white and formal black and even the different colours of the interior, blue, red, green, parchment, black or gold. Okay, so that comes to the end of today's brochure review for the Plymouth Fury. If you do have any memories of the car, please do jot them down. And indeed, any additional information you'd like to add, please put that in the comments too. But for now, we'll say thank you for watching. Please do subscribe and like, and we'll see you very soon. Take care and goodbye.